Hi, I'm Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on the Cisco Unify Wireless Networking Solution. In this series, we're looking at radio resource management. We're trying to see how RRM works. In the previous videos, we checked how RRM was working, its principles, how it was changing the power level of the access points and the channels of the access points. We said that RRM was a combination of two factors. Two factors were uh, controlled globally. You have an RRM group, which is an auto RF group, which is um, composed of several controllers working together, and this is able to change the power level of the access points on the way down, and is also able of uh, changing the channels of the access points. Then there is a feature of RRM which is strictly local to your controller, which is coverage hole detection and correction. So that's the one we are, we are looking at today. So the coverage hole detection is local to your controller in the sense that there is no group work on this feature. And the reason why is because what you try to detect here is if one of your clients is getting out of range. So that's something which is only referring to your access points. And the idea here is that if one of the clients is getting out of range, you may want to increase the power of one of your access points to maintain his client. So this has nothing to do with the work group, so that's why it's not controlled by the RF group, but just by the controller locally itself. So it's based on the SNR. It's actually a little bit of a complex algorithm because the idea here is to, uh, you can see it in the middle, to determine the cutoff value from where you'll be determining that some clients are in trouble and that you may have to increase the power of your access points. But the way you do that is that you're going to use an access point power level, then a coverage profile and a constant. I will show you the coverage profile value. It's based on an RSSI somewhere in your controller. But be aware that when you change it, you're not actually changing the um, RSSI value below which you need to do something. What you're changing here is the coverage profile value that has to be combined in this client SNR cutoff algorithm value to determine if the client is in trouble or not. And basically the results of this computation is that you would need to have a client with a 12 dB SNR or better always. If a client goes below 12 dB, you basically think that this client is in trouble. But what we don't want to do is to change the um, power level as soon as a client is in trouble because that would render the network very unstable. So you need to have a client experiencing this issue for a certain amount of time and the, as you can see here it's 60 seconds by default uh, before you decide that really something is strictly a problem and you really need to do something for this area. So here we're not trying to change or solve temporary issues due to some interference suddenly occurring or trying to solve structural issues of an area not being covered well enough. So that's why you need to have at least 60 seconds of issues uh, for, for you to trigger this algorithm. You also need to have a certain number of clients experiencing this issue. As you can see, the default is 3. That is something you can change. You can change it. Um, but you need to have a certain number of clients. So the way it works is that each client's signal is being heard by its corresponding access point, of course. And every 5 seconds, the access point is going to register what is the actual SNR value for this client. The access point is going to collect this information every 5 seconds and every 90 seconds the access point is going to feed the controller with the sum of all this information it collected over these 90 last seconds, so once every 5 seconds. So basically your access point has 18 values to return all the time to its controller. From there the controller is going to gather this information and once every 180 seconds, again, that's something you cannot change, the controller is going to decide if over the last 180 seconds period, at least three clients on one given access point experience an SNR of 12 dB or less, or less, in which case the controller is going to try to increase the power of this access point. How does that work? Let me show you on the controller. So here you are in wireless, I'm in the A spectrum coverage, and I'm enabling coverage hole detection and I have some thresholds here and again as you can see you are looking at our RSSI value but keep in mind that this value you're entering here is the profile that you saw in my equation before here so you are integrating this value here in this uh, equation and you need to have at least three clients and you can change this value of course and the coverage exception level says that if 
20% of clients on these access points or more have this issue that you say having less than 12 dBs in R for 60 seconds or more over the last 180 seconds, then you need to trigger the algorithm. So these two work in combination with each other. So you say I need to have at least three clients experiencing this issue or 25% of my clients. So if I have um, four clients, if one client experiences this issue, I have my 25%. If I have 10 clients, well, I need to have at least three clients. 25% or three clients here, these two values are taken as number of clients that have this issue and that cannot roam to another access point. Because of course, if you have another access point in the area hearing the signal, um, then of course you consider that you can have these clients roam to the other access point. That is something you saw in my slide here in the last topic here. Sticky roaming clients might impact algorithm efficiency. So that what means is that if you have a client that sticks to an access point, moves very far away from the access point and doesn't jump to another access point, these kind of clients can affect the network in the sense that they will be below this uh, threshold and they will, be not, they will not be roaming. So that may be triggering uh, the access point power level. It used to be true in the previous versions of the code up to 4.1.185. But nowadays, um, most of the time, the controller is going to check if the access point first has this number of clients experiencing the issue, but also if no other access point around are hearing these clients well enough. In some other, if some other access points are hearing these clients, it will not trigger the coverage algorithm. Still, you may have clients not being heard by any access points of this controller and being heard by access points on other controllers. And as the coverage algorithm is local, this controller will not realize that these clients are heard by other access points because they are not its access points. So it might trigger uh, the RRM uh, coverage threshold algorithm anyway. Um, so something you may want to have a look at when you have a, a large network with old clients and sticky clients. In which case we say usually if you um, lower uh, these values, you, some, you, you sometimes solve this problem. This concludes this series on this on the RRM. A few things I would like you to keep in mind. First, there are two algorithms, one which is local to the controller, one which is global to the RF group. The one which is local is the coverage hole detection, increases the power level, and the one which is global to the RF group is um, the one that triggers the channel change and the power level reduction. That's one thing. A um, few information you need to remember, but check the other uh, videos for that. Uh, important thing, intercontroller communications need to have a few UDP ports. You see it at the bottom of this slide here. They need to be open for the RRM algorithm uh, to allow exchanges between the controllers. Otherwise, it's, each controller sees itself as being the only member of its group. Also, be aware that these algorithms are set to work in combination with each other to improve the way the network works. So do not change them without testing. You know, affecting one may affect the others and you might unbalance the way the network works just because you want to play with some features. So be very cautious when you change them. I hope this was useful for you. I'd like to thank you for watching.